Hello and welcome to Raju Notes channel, your pit stop for weekly current affairs updates. The updates tailor made for students taking all kinds of competitive exams like UPSC, civils, defense, and placement interviews. Please subscribe to the channel and stay updated every Sunday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi declared Modera village in Gujarat, which is famous for a centuries old sun temple, as the country's first 24 into 7 solar powered village this week. Modera village is located 25 kilometers from Mahasana districts of Gujarat and about 100 kilometers from the state capital of Gandhinagar and is located on the banks of Pushpavati River. The village has a ground mounted solar power plant and over 1,300 rooftop solar systems with 1 kilowatt capacity have been installed on the houses to generate the electricity. All of these solar systems are linked to a battery energy storage system called as BESS. During the day, the solar panels will provide the power to the village, while in the evening, BESS, the India's first grid connected megawatt hour scale battery energy storage system, will provide power to the houses. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has awarded 2022 Swergis Risk Bank Prize in Economic Sciences in memory of Alfred Nobel to Ben S. Bernake, Douglas W. Diamond and Philip H. Dibing. They have been given the award for research on banks and financial crisis. A prize money of 10 million Swedish NOR, approximately 7.29 crores, will be shared among the trio. India voted to reject Russia's demand for a secret ballot in the United Nations General Assembly on a draft resolution to condemn Moscow's illegal annexation of the four regions of the Ukraine, with New Delhi favoring a public vote on the text along with the other 100 nations. The 193-member United Nations General Assembly on Monday voted on a motion by Albania that action on the draft resolution that would condemn Russia's illegal so-called referendums and attempted illegal annexations of Donetsk, Kherson, Luhansk and Zaposizhia regions of Ukraine be taken by a recorded vote. Russia has demanded that the resolution be voted upon by a secret ballot. Elon Musk's SpaceX-owned satellite internet service provider Starlink has started talks with the Department of Telecommunications in India to apply for license to, the, to offer satellite-based communication services in the country. To provide satellite-based communication services, company needs to get global mobile personal communications by satellite license that is GMPCS from the government. Sources say that Starlink is likely to apply for the same within a month. While the license can be granted to the company by the DOT, the allocation of spectrum is likely to be done only once the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India that is TRI and the Government of India decides whether the airwaves need to be auctioned or allocated administratively. At present, the Government has issued letter of intent to Bharti Group backed OneWeb and Geo Satellite Communications, a unit of Reliance Geo, to offer satellite-based internet services. Geo Satellite will now sign the license agreement within a week as per the official. India on Tuesday delivered another batch of an aid comprising of essential medicines and medical items to Afghanistan as part of its humanitarian assistance to the war-ravaged country. India has supplied 45 tons of medical assistance in 13 batches to Afghanistan in the last few months. According to the Ministry of External Affairs, it said that the aid was in continuation of India's special relationship with the people of Afghanistan and in view of the urgent appeals made by the United Nations to assist them. India has supplied the 13th batch of medical assistance consisting of essential medicines and medical surgical items like pediatric stethoscope, infusion pump, drip chamber set, electrocautery, nylon sutures, etc. The consignment were handed over to the authorities of Indira Gandhi Children Hospital in Kabul. Till date, India has supplied almost 45 tons of medical assistance which include essential life-saving medicines like anti-TB medicines, 5 lakh doses of COVID vaccine, medical surgical items, etc. In addition, India has also supplied 40,000 metric tons of wheat to the Afghan people. India has been pitching up for provisioning and providing 
unimpeded humanitarian aid to Afghanistan to address the unfolding humanitarian crisis in the country following the capture of power by the Taliban. NATO will push ahead with a long planned nuclear exercise next week despite rising tensions over the war in Ukraine and President Vladimir Putin's insistence that he is not bluffing about usage of all available means to defend Russian territory. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said the exercise dubbed Steadfast Noon is held annually and usually runs for about 1 week. It involves fighter jets capable of carrying nuclear warheads but does not involve any live bombs. Conventional jets and surveillance and refueling aircraft also routinely take part. 14 of the 30 NATO members countries will be involved in the exercise which was planned before Russia invaded Ukraine in February. The main part of the maneuvers would be to held more than 1000 kilometers from Russia a NATO official said. With the Russian army retreating under the blows of Ukrainian forces and the western weapons Putin raised the stakes by annexing four Ukrainian regions and declaring a partial mobilization of up to 3 lakh reservists to buttress the crumbling front. As his war plans have gone every, Putin has repeatedly signaled that he could resort to nuclear weapons to protect the Russian gains. The threat is also aimed at deterring NATO nations from sending more sophisticated weapons to Ukraine. International Monetary Fund has projected that the global growth will slow from 6% in 2021 to 3.2% in 2022 and 2.7% in 2023. Projecting the growth, the IMF said that this will be the weakest growth since 2001. Except for the global financial crisis and the acute phase of pandemic, it said that the world's largest economies like US, China and the Europe area will continue to stall. However, in the World Economic Outlook 2022 report, the IMF also said that India will be the fastest growing large economy in the world, cutting India's GDP growth forecast to 6.8% for the financial year 2023. The IMF predicted that the india will continue to remain on the track to become one of the fastest growing economies in the world imf expects that inflation in india will come down to 4% range next year it said that the global inflation will likely peak at 9.5% this year before slowing down to 4.1% by 2024 imf also warned that a major economic slump is yet to come and 2023 will feel like a recession to many people calling india deployment of a direct cash transfer scheme and other similar social welfare programs as a logistical marvel the imf said from india there is lot to learn the 36th national games came to a conclusion on wednesday this week with services sports control board sscb finishing on the top of the medal tally with 61 gold medals Maharashtra came second with 39 gold medals while Haryana came third with 38 gold medals. Overall, Maharashtra won the most number of medals with 140 while the SSCB won 128. India and US have inked four memorandum of understandings in the field of oil and gas to intensify the bilateral strategic clean energy partnership, indicating how both countries can leverage the strength of the private sector to solve issues pertaining to climate action and energy security the memorandum of understandings which are precisely between oil and gas companies of india and the us were inked on tuesday this week by minister of oil and natural gas hardeep singh puri during a round table conference in houston with senior executives from 35 major industry players in the field of energy medical resources including the tellurian and exxon mobil indian oil Corporation, Avantika Gas Limited, Engineers India Limited, and Indra Prastha Gas Limited were the companies to sign the Memorandum of Understanding. The Indian Army assault dog Zoom, who was shot twice while fighting terrorists in JNK's Anantnag, last week succumbed to these injuries on Thursday this week while undergoing treatment. Zoom passed away at around 12 p.m. at the advanced field veterinary hospital the army had sent zoom inside the house where the terrorists were holed up during the cordon and search operation which it successfully conducted 
Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman on Wednesday held bilateral meetings with her counterpart from Japan, Saudi Arabia, Netherlands and South Korea as part of the India's effort to strengthen its economic ties with major countries of the world. Being held on the sidelines of the annual meeting of the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, the finance minister in addition to bilateral issues discussed with them some of the major economic challenges being faced by the world. Prominently, the energy crisis and inflation in the wake of Ukraine and war, debt sustainability and the climate change. In 2023, India hold the presidency of G20 and Japan of the G7 group of countries. The two finance ministers also discuss key agendas pertaining to the Indo-Pacific economic cooperation. The Supreme Court of India gave a split verdict in the Karnataka hijab ban case as one of the judges said that there was a divergence in opinion. While Justice Hemant Gupta dismissed the petition challenging the Karnataka High Court order and upheld with the hijab ban in the educational institutions in the state, Justice Sudhanshu Dhulia said wearing hijab is a matter of choice. In light of the divergence of the opinion, the matter has to be now placed before the Chief Justice of India for appropriate directions. President of India Srimati Draupadi Murmu inaugurated Param Kamarupa Supercomputer Facility and a high power active and passive component library of Samir at Indian Institute of Technology Guwahati on the first day of her visit to the state. The Param Kamarupa is one of its kind of a supercomputer in the northeast region installed under the National Supercomputing Mission. The president said that the supercomputer Param Kamarupa will provide advanced computing, healthcare techniques along with solutions for many issues to the region. She also informed that many components of this supercomputer developed were indigenous. India on Friday successfully test-fired a submarine-launched ballistic missile SLBM from a nuclear submarine INS Arihant. The Ministry of Defence said the missile was tested to predetermine the range and impacted the target area in the Bay of Bengal with a very high accuracy. All operations and technological parameters of the weapon system have been validated, the ministry added. This test comes at a very important juncture where India and China are loggerheads and while the North Korea is firing weapons across the South Korean region. Lawmakers in Iraq on Thursday elected Abdul Latif Rashid as the country's new president paving the way for the formation of a new government and ending a year of deadlock after October 2021 elections. Soon after being elected, Rashid named Mohammad Shia al-Sudani as Prime Minister. Thursday's vote took place shortly after nine rockets landed around the Baghdad's green zone. And now for the segment where we see the events that unfolded this week back in history. October 9, 1941, the Manhattan Project begins. On this day, 81 years ago, US President F.D. Roosevelt approved intensified research into the feasibility of a fission bomb. With this, he became the first national leader to commit to the effort to achieve a nuclear device. The American pursuit of the bomb would be officially cisterned as the Manhattan Project in August 1942. The Niazis had discovered how to split the atom, but the Americans would secretly make a bomb and use it too, twice. October 11, 1987, India launches Operation Pavan in Sri Lanka. On this day, 35 years ago, the Indian peacekeeping force IPKF in Sri Lanka launched Operation Pavan to take control of Jaffna from the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam LTTE as part of Indo-Sri Lanka Accord. In spite of suffering heavy casualties, the IPKF took control of the Jaffna Peninsula from the LTTE in two weeks. The cost of the operation, often called as India's Vietnam, was however far beyond just the military lives lost. October 14, 1933 Germany withdraws from League of Nations. On this day, 89 years ago, Chancellor Adolf Hitler withdrew Germany from the League of Nations when it refused Germany's bid to build its military to a level 
equal to that of the other major powers. This was Hitler's symbolic move to reject the humiliating terms of the Treaty of Versailles imposed on Germany after World War I. Germany's departure from the League was followed by a massive military build-up that would ultimately lead to World War II. Well, that's all friends for this week's updates. See you soon next Sunday on the same channel. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.